here from Plans Me Paper, and today I wanted to come on and give you guys a quick look at my home section here in my A5 Filofax Planner. This is where I keep my Fly Lady Control Journal. I have been doing Fly Lady for ooh, almost two years now. Uh, I really like it. It's super helpful for me, and it's definitely been something that has helped me to get on top of housework, to stay on top of all those little weird cleaning tasks that you don't have to do every single week or every month even, but you do want to do on a somewhat routine basis. And it's especially helped me during this transition into motherhood that I've been going through about the last six months. So it's helped me to kind of let go and enjoy life while still being able to keep my home somewhat under control with uh, my newborn baby who is now a six month old all of a sudden. <laughs> so uh, I wanted to come on today and just give you guys a look at how I've been organizing and planning for success with my Fly Lady system and how it has changed. I've done a video like this before, so I'll link that down below. And that showed kind of how I organized things back when I was in a personal size planner and also back before I had my son. So that was quite a while ago now. And this is a little different, but still pretty similar. And this is how I'm kind of setting things up and organizing things now in my A5 planner. So first off, I put here in the front just a sheet of lined paper. I labeled it Fly Lady Control Journal, and I've got a few just important reminders. I recently reread the Fly Lady's book, Sync Reflections, which I hugely recommend. If you haven't read it and you're thinking about doing Fly Lady, read it first. It's so inspiring and uh, it's just a great read. It's very quick and easy and definitely inspirational. So I would check that out if you haven't, but these are just a few things that stuck out to me and things I wanted to remind myself as I opened this up each day and each week. So first is what the fly in Fly Lady stands for. It stands for first love yourself, which is always a good reminder, especially for someone like me. I'm a little bit of a perfectionist and sometimes it really bugs me when things aren't just the way I want them and I feel like a failure about that. And so this is a really good reminder to just, you know, love yourself, take care of yourself, take care of your family. That is what's most important. And so that's what that means to me. I've got the Fly Lady quote, even housework done incorrectly blesses your family. And again, that is just a great reminder to me personally to let go of perfectionism. You know, even if I don't have time to do something perfectly, I should still take the 15 minutes that I do have to do something. And that totally blesses me and it blesses my family and helps me stay on top of things. So I love that thought from the Fly Ladies book. And then this is just, you know, paraphrasing, but I just wrote a note to myself, when something feels challenging or you lack motivation, set your timer and just start. Again, trying to let go of that idea of perfection uh, you know, some, some days, some weeks, I don't even have a full hour to do my weekly home blessing, or I don't know if I will, because nowadays I'm doing it during my son's naps. And so, you know, if he wakes up after 20 minutes, then sometimes I only get in 20 minutes, and that's okay. I just, you know, just starting is the best way to go, and I do like to set my timer too, because there are some tasks that in your head seem like this big, giant hard thing to do and then you set a timer and do it and realize it takes like five minutes <laughs> so I'll, I'll mention some of those as i go through my routines as well but i just love having these right up front and center as important reminders from the fly lady the second thing i've got here in my control journal is my menu plan for this coming month so i've got my september menu plan here i've just got the days listed out and what I plan on making for each day of the month. And I'm sure I might not necessarily actually make all of these things. Um, so if I don't make every single one of these things, I will just save it for the next month. So I'll just cross things off as I do make them for the month. And I did plan for leftovers a couple times in there as well. Next, I have my daily routines. So I've got my morning and my evening routine. Right now I'm just sticking with those two. 
And that's because I kind of vary how much time I give myself for them. So sometimes my morning routine, I don't actually get it all the way done until like 10, 30, 11, uh, which is, you know, later than I would like, but that's just how it goes sometimes. You know, if, if the baby's sick or if something comes up, I just get it done when I can. Uh, and then same thing with the evening routine. Sometimes I start really early, like more like in the afternoon to try to, you know, forward load and get some things done on that evening routine before the night gets too busy. So that's how I've got my routine set up. I'll go through here. I've got a workout, shower and wash or wash face, do your hair or makeup or both if I have time, <laughs> make my bed, swish and swipe the upstairs bathroom, swish and swipe the downstairs bathroom, pump parts, clean those up and get them set up for the next day, uh, water and vitamins, and then start laundry. That's my morning routine. And you can see here, I didn't quite get everything done today. I did not, I have not made my bed yet, which is weird, I always make my bed, but for some reason today I haven't. <laughs> and then switch and swipe upstairs, I also did not get that done today, and I'm probably just gonna pick that up tomorrow. So I don't have those two checked off. But how I have been doing my routines lately, I used to have them on like a habit tracker page where I would check them off each day of the week or each day of the month and I would kind of see my progress over the course of the week or the month. But I actually found that to be a little more discouraging than helpful sometimes, especially with um, when I first had my baby because there would be times where he was sick, for instance, or um, I got sick a couple times and things just wouldn't get done for several days, you know. And so it was discouraging to me to see, oh, I missed a whole week this month. I didn't, you know, get a workout in for this long or I didn't get a swish and swipe done even for four days. Um, and that was discouraging to me. And so I've decided I want to start each day fresh. I want to start each day with a new fresh attitude. And therefore, I want to have each day a new fresh tracking page. And so what I do instead of keeping track of it on a habit tracker is I just wrote it on this sheet of lined paper, just plain paper, and then I actually use these transparent sticky notes. So I'll take this off now so you can see. It's just a piece of transparent sticky note and I just stick a new one on there each day. It's just a little strip and that way I can check things off each day, but at the end of the day, like this evening, I'm going to take this strip off and tomorrow and put a new one on and tomorrow I'm going to start totally fresh. I'm not going to stress myself out or feel bad about not making the bed yesterday or not getting my swish and swipe done yesterday. Uh, you know, life's just too short. And so I, I do these routines to make my life easier and to bless my family and bless my home and feeling bad or guilty or regretful does not do any of those things. So that's why I've kind of switched that up here in my control journal and I'm really enjoying this new system of just putting a little piece of transparent sticky note on top of my routine each day and checking it off and then taking it off and throwing it away and starting 100% fresh the next day. So that's how I'm doing that. I will mention, so I've got my transparent sticky notes up here in the front of my planner. Sometimes I tuck them in this pocket or I just keep them here under the strap. Um, and you can see they're just little strips. I got these transparent sticky notes from Office Max. They were originally just a standard size sticky note, the larger size, and I just cut them into strips so that I'm not wasting any space. I just use only the little strip that I need. And that's how I do that. Uh, the reason why I don't use a like a transparency or a um, sleeve and then use a dry erase marker is just because I take this planner with me all over the house, um, out of the house, all the time I take it with me. And I usually do not have a whiteboard erase marker handy anywhere in my house. I only have those here in the office. And so I didn't want to kind of tie myself down and I didn't want to worry about carrying an extra marker around all the time. I just wanted to use whatever pen I had handy, which is usually this pen because I keep it here in my, my pen loop. And so that's why I kind of preferred this sticky note method instead of an erasing method. Uh, also, it does not smear or smudge any of my other pages, which I like. 
So that is my daily routine page. For my evening routine, I guess I'll read those off real quick. I do dishes, I clean my counters and sink, I pack my husband's lunch, I pick up any toys that were left out. I try to do that throughout the day, but sometimes it doesn't work, you know, there's a few things out still. Same thing with dishes. Uh, I try to do a five minute hot spot. I put my laundry away that hopefully I've already folded, but sometimes again, it's not put all the way away yet at the end of the day. I lay my clothes out for the next day. I pump and I wash my pump parts, and then I treat any spit up stains that have happened throughout the day on burp cloths or clothes or furniture or anywhere. I just try to get those cleaned up every day so they don't build up on me. So that is my evening routine. Um, like I said, this reminder at the very beginning of just start a timer and start. Uh, I use that a lot for the spit up stains and the washing my pump parts at the end of the day because I do both of those things at like 10 o'clock at night. I'm always really tired um, because I've, you know, been, I, I get up in the middle of the night still to feed the baby and so I'm always really not in the mood to do those things, but I know that they take like five minutes or less. They're super fast when I actually do them and that helps me to stay motivated and go ahead and get them done because when I do them the night before, it makes the next morning so much better, so much smoother. I can start fresh and I don't need to worry about, you know, scrambling to get my pump cleaned before I you know, need to use it the next day or anything. So yeah, that's my routines. My weekly routines I also have here and I don't have a tab for them yet. I'm thinking I'm gonna add a little tab just like I've got for these two. These tabs are from Hobby Lobby. They are the Carpe Diem tabs, and I got them on clearance recently from Hobby Lobby. So check that out if you're interested. And I just stuck them there on the top of those pages. For my weekly routines, I have my weekly home blessing and my weekly plan, like my basic weekly plan from the Fly Ladies book. So mine are a little different than hers. I just adjusted them to fit my own life and kind of where I'm at right now. So in this house, my um, weekly home blessing is I dust the living room and I dust the master bedroom. So I, and Nolan's room, my, my son's room. I do not worry about dusting the other areas on a weekly basis because we're just not in them very much. Um, we pretty much spend our lives in these rooms. And so I just focus on those. And then I do the other rooms with my zone cleaning. Uh, vacuuming the downstairs. I do a pretty thorough vacuum at least once a week because we're in, in and about the downstairs all the time. And so that's where it gets the most traffic and the most dirty. I do just a quick vacuum of upstairs. So again, I don't do every single room. I don't do our guest room. I don't always do like our den area upstairs because we just don't use it all the time. I mostly just focus on the high traffic areas. I do my sheets and my baby sheets every week. I mop either the kitchen or the bathrooms. That's you know something new as well, just because I have limited time. I don't usually have time to do both, so I just alternate each week which one I'm gonna do. Unless I have extra time, then I, I do both sometimes. Uh, I take the trash out from everywhere, and then I clean the mirrors quickly. So that's my weekly home blessing and my basic weekly plan. I try to do my weekly home blessing on Mondays, and it's usually, I try to do an hour. Sometimes it's less, sometimes it's more. Just depends how long the baby naps, basically. Uh, Tuesday, I like to get out of the house and do errands. Um, that's not usually groceries. It's more like going to the library, um, you know, any other random stores that we needed to go to to get baby clothes or house stuff or just general errands. On Wednesday, I do my zone cleaning. Uh, I am back to doing that more like in one big chunk. I just do a couple big projects and try to spend about an hour a week zone cleaning on Wednesdays. And I zone clean just based off of what needs to be done the most that week. So I don't necessarily force myself into any particular zone. Uh, last week, I felt like my windows were just driving me crazy. So I just did 
as many windows as I could get done in an hour. And so that was in all the different zones of my house. I did some in my bedroom, I did a bunch in the living room, I did some in the upstairs just den area, in the office, and so I kind of hit a bunch of zones and I'll show you how I keep track of that here in a second. On Thursday, I try to do visiting with my friends. Um, I have a couple other friends who have little babies and I love to get together with them um, somewhat routinely. So I try to set up some sort of play date or walk or something to get out of the house and you know have some, some positivity going on <laughs> on Thursdays. And then I also plan for the next week on Thursdays. So that includes meal planning, grocery lists, um, planning out the calendar, things like that, dealing with paperwork in the office, bills, etc. Friday is my catch up day. So anything I didn't quite finish or need to do more of from the other four days of the week, I catch up on on Friday. And then Saturday and Sunday are, are mostly like family, fr family days, refresh days, but we usually do also go grocery shopping together on Saturday. Uh, my husband and I and our baby, of course, um, we just kind of do that as it's almost fun. We just kind of all go out together and do a few errands and get lunch or something and then come home. So that is my weekly plan. And last thing here in my control journal is my monthly trackers. So I'll flip this around so you can see a little better here. Okay, so here are my zone cleaning trackers. I have one of these pages for each of my zones in my house and I just check off. I've got all my different tasks that need to be done within that zone and I just check them off each month that I do get them completed. You can see some months I've been much more successful than other months. Some months I've barely gotten anything done and that is totally okay with me. I just do the best I can. I get done what I can and I do things in the order that I feel like they need to be done. So for instance, um, some things I think just need to be done pretty much every month, like deep sweeping and mopping the kitchen, that's gotta happen pretty much every month. I guess it didn't happen in February because I had my baby that month, but otherwise um, I always do a really thorough deep sweep, deep mop of the kitchen. Um, cleaning out the fridge and freezer, again, that pretty much needs to happen every month for me. Um, cleaning the oven, stove, and microwave happens almost every month as well. Um, I just don't like to let things get built up in those, so I do them very routinely. Whereas cleaning the inside of my cabinets and drawers has not really happened thoroughly since January. So that's definitely something that's on my radar, but it just hasn't been a top priority for me in this new season over the last couple months. Same thing with cleaning the top of my cabinets. I know I haven't done it since January, so I'm gonna be looking to get that done very soon. Um, but it's also one of the things that just doesn't have to get done as often as some of the other things. So that's what I've got going on. I have one of these pages for each of my zones. I have five zones in my house. And I just keep track of what I get done each month. So that are those are my zone trackers. And I really like that because even though right now I'm not doing one a week per one zone per se, I still can totally keep track of what I've done and what I haven't done and it kind of keeps me balanced having these little trackers. And then last, uh, my last tracker in here, I've got my financial info, which is just helpful to have. I've got bills and then when they need to get paid and the amount that I pay for them each month. So I just check that off each month and write in the amount. At the very end, I just have a few extra pages of trackers in case I find any other routines that I need to track every month throughout the year. And I do that here. So that is my control journal here in my A5 Filofax. It's pretty simple, uh, nothing too crazy but it does help me to stay on top of routines here in my home and it helps me to really stay positive and not give myself a hard time uh, while I'm doing that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and enjoyed seeing how I plan for success in the Fly Lady system and how I've kind of adapted it and changed it to fit my needs. So if you did like it, please click, click like and subscribe down below and I will see you guys next time. Hope you have a great rest of your day.